for small businesses looking to grow or scale their organizations, enterprise software or ERP systems, as they're often called, can be a great way to grow your organization. But what's the best small business ERP system for your organization? Today, I'm going to talk about the top 10 systems for small businesses. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent digital transformation firm that helps clients through their transformation journeys. And in building and growing small businesses, we find that a lot of our smaller clients are looking for ways to automate their businesses, to streamline inefficiencies, remove bottlenecks, and address a lot of the challenges that prevent small businesses from growing to achieve their full potential. So what we did is we looked at our experience with companies that are in the small and mid-sized market, which in general we classify as companies less than 500 employees, and look at what are the comparisons of the different systems out there that we see small businesses most likely to succeed with. Some of the criteria we use to rank these different systems include things like the total value of the system, the functionality, uh, the ease of implementation, the estimated cost, general functionality. Those are some of the things that we use to objectively rank the different systems in the market. So without further ado, let's dive into the top 10. Coming in at number 10 is a ERP system called DCOM. Now DCOM is a very simple to use ERP system used quite a bit by the small and mid-sized market, also used by some larger global organizations as well, but we find that it's ease of use and ease of implementation to be a good fit for a lot of smaller organizations. This is especially true for organizations that have either manufacturing capabilities, distribution, supply chain intensive types of needs. Those types of organizations often find that DCOM can be a great fit for these organizations. So although the software can scale for larger organizations, many of our small and mid market companies that are in manufacturing, distribution, supply chain related organizations find that DCOM can be a great fit for their organizations. Coming in at number nine is Salesforce. Now many of you may think of Salesforce as a CRM only system, customer relationship management, which is true. Salesforce does do customer relationship management and it's relatively easy to implement for organizations that are looking to automate some of their sales and customer service types of processes. But in addition to providing CRM capabilities, Salesforce also has an ecosystem of third party applications that can fill out the breadth of requirements for an ERP type of capability. So for example, Financial Force is a system that handles financials, ties into Salesforce on the CRM side of things and allows you to combine your financials, your customer relationship, as an example, but there's also other third-party applications that are available as well. Now, Salesforce is a fairly flexible type of software that can integrate well with other applications. The downside of it, though, is that there can be some complexity in implementing it and maintaining that software just because of the flexibility and the ability to integrate with other systems. It requires a certain amount of technical sophistication and maturity within your own organization to manage that going forward. So you really have to look at, do I have the internal IT capabilities to support something like that? But if you do, and you're a sales driven organization and CRM in particular is very important, in addition to some of the other ERP capabilities, then Salesforce can be a great fit for you. Now, another system we commonly see in the mid market, especially in manufacturing or distribution or retail types of organizations is Epicor. Epicor is a system that's been around for a long time. They've focused in a number of different industry verticals like manufacturing, distribution, retail, like I just mentioned. But they've also provided a number of other capabilities that can be suitable for organizations. Now, while Epicor is commonly used in the small and mid-market, there's a pretty good adoption rate in the mid-market. There's some uncertainty around the viability of the company in general and the product in general. There's been no announced plans for the company to retrench from any of its product offerings. The company has been around for a long time, but when compared to some of the other vendors in the marketplace, there's questions about what the long-term viability and roadmap might look like, at least in our opinion, observing the market for the last 20 years or so. But regardless of that, Epicor can be a great fit for your organization, especially if you're a retail shop, if you're a manufacturing shop, distribution, and Epicor also has a number of different products that can fill different needs for different types of organizations. So all those things considered are enough to land Epicor number eight on our list. Coming in at number seven is QuickBooks Enterprise. 
That may sound unusual for some of you. Some of you may be watching this video to try and find a replacement for your QuickBooks Enterprise. But the reality is that a lot of startups, a lot of smaller organizations use QuickBooks. And the reason for that is it's become kind of a de facto accounting and financial software package for small and mid-sized companies. What's also further increased the adoption of QuickBooks has been the add-ons and some of the third-party systems that extend the functionality and capabilities of QuickBooks. For example, there's a product out there called Fishbowl. Inventory management ties into QuickBooks and allows companies to add some more advanced inventory management capabilities to their QuickBooks Enterprise capabilities. Now, even though QuickBooks is widely used by small and mid-market companies, and we've seen the product scale up to, I believe, 200 million in revenue is the largest client that we've seen use QuickBooks, we find that many organizations will at some point outgrow QuickBooks. And so if you're an extremely high growth organization or you have ambitious plans for growth, or if you've been established for a while and you're looking for longer term growth, you may want to consider other options in the top 10 because we spend a lot more time helping clients replace QuickBooks than we do helping them to upgrade or to improve the capabilities they have with QuickBooks. Now with all that in mind, that's enough to land QuickBooks Enterprise at number seven on our list. Coming in at number six on our list is SAP Business One. This is a product that's been around for quite some time. SAP actually acquired the product about 20 years ago and has really used this as its penetration of the small and mid-market. SAP has S4 HANA, which tends to focus on the upper mid-market larger organizations. Business One is designed more for small and mid-market companies. Now, the good news with SAP Business One is a lot of small and mid-sized companies use it, especially in parts of Europe and Asia, Asia Pacific, Latin America, it's widely used, not quite as much in North America, but it is worldwide commonly used by many small and mid-sized companies. The thing that's holding Business One back from being higher on our list is that there's some questions about the long-term viability of the product. With SAP focusing so much of its time and R&D dollars and resources and marketing and sales on S4 HANA, I have some questions around whether or not Business One will be around for the long term. And we found through past experience that a lot of software vendors can only support so many products, and especially ones that are going after big enterprise customers and the fact that SAP is so entrenched in trying to secure its footprint with larger enterprises leads me to question whether or not it will invest appropriately in business one for the small and mid market. But despite all of that, enough companies out there use it, it's suitable enough for small and mid markets companies that that's enough to land SAP business one at number six on our list. Coming in at number five on our list is a product called Priority Software. And it's probably one of the lesser known ERP systems on our list, but it's something that's very well suited for small and mid-market companies. Now the company itself was founded in Israel and is quickly expanding its footprint from outside Middle East and Europe to North America and other parts of the world. And it's a product that's very easy to use, very intuitive, relatively easy to implement, uh, has a great user interface. There's a lot of good strengths that come along with this product. It's also, strong in areas such as manufacturing, distribution, complex supply chains. Those are some of the differentiators for Priority Software. Now, one of the other things that's strong about the product is that it has a, a pretty cool uh, mobile development app that allows you to, without actually coding anything, create mobile apps based on the software and the, the data that you have in the actual uh, Priority database or the Priority Software. So that's a unique differentiator for companies that have mobile workforces or have mobile capabilities that they want to embed within their organizations. Now, the biggest thing holding back priority software are a couple things. One is it's not very well known. Uh, secondly, they're still expanding their implementation footprint and building out an ecosystem of partners that can support the product. So there's not a lot of resources out there that can support the product. But if you're a small, mid-sized company, you'll probably get more attention from a company like Priority and there's other upsides that could outweigh some of those downsides that I mentioned. With all of that in mind, that's enough to land Priority Software at number five on our list. Coming in at number four on our list is Sage Software. This is a company that's been around for a long time and has focused almost exclusively on the small and mid-market space, ERP systems for the small and mid-market space. 
And they have a couple different products. They have Sage 100 Cloud, Sage 300 Cloud, Sage X3, which X3 is more for uh, some larger, more complex organizations. But the reason I bring this up is they have three primary offerings that can help mid-size and smaller organizations navigate whatever capabilities they're looking for. And so the product tends to be strong in financials, inventory, distribution, um, HCM, CRM, that sort of thing. So it really is a complete product, uh, pretty well established, pretty mature product. And we find a lot of companies that are in manufacturing distribution, uh, inventory management intensive types of organizations tend to do pretty well and find a good fit with Sage. So if you're one of those types of organizations, Sage would be a good product to at least consider on your short list. With all of that in mind, that's enough to land Sage at number four on our list. Now coming in at number three on our list is Odoo Software. It's another product that you may or may not have heard of, and it used to be called OpenERP. It's one of the leading, if not the leading, open source ERP systems, and in fact, the only open source ERP system to make our top 10 list. And it's highly adopted by small and mid-market companies across the world. Very easy to use, very straightforward system, uh, has very straightforward pricing, which a lot of small and mid-market companies appreciate. It also allows you to do a lot with it. There's a lot of flexibility in Odoo in terms of integration and adding applications and working your way and growing your way into the full capabilities of the software. A lot of the other systems in our top 10 list require you to implement a broad cross-section of functionality in order for the whole thing to work, whereas Odoo is built more modular to where you can implement module by module as your company grows and expands. Now, the downside of Odoo is that it requires a certain amount of focus and attention. It's an open source system, which is good news, that provides a lot of flexibility, but it requires a very much of a hands-on implementation approach to figuring out how you want this all to work for your organization. There's a little bit more legwork from the, call it the end user perspective or the functional implementation perspective. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're an organization that's growing very quickly and you don't have a lot of IT staff and you don't have a lot of bandwidth to be messing around with software, trying to figure out how to implement it and manage it day to day, that can be a little bit much for some organizations. And the other part of it is that it doesn't have as much predefined business processes and workflows as you might find with some of the other vendors in the top 10 list. So those are some things to think about or some trade-offs that come along with it. But given the fact that so many organizations use it and it is flexible, easy to use, focused on the small to mid-market, that's enough to land Odoo at number three on our list. Coming in at number two on our list is Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Now, Microsoft D365 has two versions or two primary versions of the product. One is called FNO or finance and operations, which is for larger organizations. And then you have business central, which is more for small and mid market companies. Business central is a little bit more focused, a little bit more simple, a little bit more vanilla, and it could be more suitable for an organization that isn't overly complex. Now, one of the benefits of Microsoft Dynamics is that the product itself is fairly flexible when compared to some of the other larger vendors in our top 10. It's easy to integrate, relatively speaking. And it's also something that is used by a lot of organizations and it's commonly compared to other shortlist options for, for small and mid-market companies. Now the downside of Business Central is its flexibility can sometimes be a liability. Just because you can change the software more easily doesn't mean you should. And that's one of the challenges that a lot of small and mid-market companies have with implementing a product like Microsoft D365. The other downside and probably the biggest downside risk of implementing Microsoft D365 is that the value added reseller ecosystem of partners that can help implement the product is very much fragmented, very inconsistent. There's not much control over it. So you really have to vet those partners very carefully because there's a lot of poor quality implementers out there. There's some good ones, but you have to wade through a lot of the poor ones to get there. So all those pros and cons being considered is enough to land Microsoft D365 Business Central at number two on our list. Coming in at number one on our list is NetSuite, a product owned by Oracle and supported by Oracle. And NetSuite is a SaaS multi-tenant software as a service product. So it's in the cloud, it's multi-tenant, meaning lots of different companies use the same instance of the software. You obviously get your own ability to configure and tailor the software for your own individual needs, but it's a pretty 
but it's more of a vanilla standard type of ERP system. Now that can be your good or bad thing depending on what type of organization you have. If you have one that is a bit of fairly vanilla organization in terms of its back office operations and you're okay with it just adapting to the way the software works, then it's not a problem. But if you have a complex organization or you really value flexibility or you have things that are super unique to you as a small business, NetSuite can be somewhat constraining or limiting. The other downside of NetSuite is it can be expensive. When compared to some of the other products we talked about in the top 10, NetSuite is one of the higher cost ones we found in terms of software licensees and ongoing subscription fees. That is something that can be negotiated. Independent third parties like Third Stage can help you negotiate that, but in general, we find that the cost is higher oftentimes for NetSuite. But all of that in mind and all those things considered is enough to land NetSuite at number one on our list. So those are the top 10 systems in the market, but how do we pick the best one? Well, first of all, it's important to recognize that that top 10 list I just went through is the top 10 for small businesses of all different types, different geographies, different industries, different cultures, and your unique culture and focus and strategic goals and objectives will lead to a different list and different sets of strengths and weaknesses based on what we just went through. So it's really important to look at what type of company you're trying to be. Are you a high growth company that's looking to scale quickly? That might lead you to a different set of shortlist options than if you're a more of a steady eddy, steady growth type of organization or a lifestyle business or one that intends to remain smaller than others. That's gonna lead you to a different answer. So it's really important to take all this with a grain of salt and have an objective view of what it is you're trying to accomplish to define the needs that are unique to you to help you land at the ideal shortlist. And I encourage you to check out a lot of the resources I've provided below and some links on our website and in the description below that'll help you navigate some of the decisions that you have to make. If you'd like to talk more about it or just brainstorm ideas of what might be the best fit for you, feel free to reach out to me. I've included my contact information below. I also encourage you to provide comments below. If you've worked with any of these systems or have comments or questions, please comment in the fields below. Please subscribe to the channel and hope you found this information useful. We'll chat soon.